Hello y'all. Thank you for your attention to my Folds modifier setup. It was in the top three on Blender Market, quite an incredible achievement for me. A lot of people have been asking for a step-by-step -step tutorial, and this is it. To follow this tutorial, make sure that you have updated to version three of modifier that has tension map preview feature. I am using a Blender version 4.2. I have also version for 3.6. It is good for versions up to 4.1. First you may face is Python script alert. It is related to rigify script that I've used to rig demo object. You may ignore it. It doesn't affect anything. Fold modifier doesn't use Python scripts because it is not an add-in, it is a modifier. So if it is not an add-in, how to install it? Open user preferences, file paths submenu. Set up file path to your assets or use default one. And then save file into this directory. Optionally, you may add modifiers into a separate catalog. Set asset browser in current file mode. Make a new category and drag and drop all assets into this catalog. Now, let's open our character and set up a modifier for it. First important step, go to Mesh Data tab and make sure that Add Rest Position is enabled. If you add modifier and forget enable this checkbox, you will see a warning message like this. In Blender 3.4 will be warning nodes, so the message would be less clumsy. As any geometry nodes asset, there are two ways to adding it to the scene. One is to drag and drop onto your mesh. Second, adding it from Add Modifier menu. The first modifier calculates tension maps from deformations. So it is essential to add it after deformations like armature modifier, hooks, or any others deform modifiers. If you have only shape key animation, put it first. It should have original count of points, so it should be before subdivision modifier. The second modifier uses tension maps and textures to add folds. The more you have subdivisions, the more visible effect you will get. So I'm adding tension maps after armature so that this modifier will calculate deformations and generate tension map. I am putting fold modifier after subdivision modifier, so I have enough geometry to make folds. After adding modifier, I have my model distorted. This is because I haven't added textures yet. So let's disable texture influence for now and make textures. First, I will go to Armature and set it to Rest Pose. It will allow me to use Symmetry Painting. In Rest Pose, there is no effect of Folds Modifier because there are no distortion made by Armature. Now I will switch to Texture Painting. As you see, I have texture painted, but for the tutorial I will make it from scratch. Let's create a new texture. Default resolution is enough. Background color should be 50% gray. If you skip color selection, like me, use fill tool to fill the image 50% gray. Open image editor in paint mode and select Fill Tool. Set color value to 0.5. Textures are an important part of the magic. They represent folds in geometry. The easiest way to make it is to draw it by hand. Areas lighter than 50% gray will rise above the surface. Darker areas will go downward, forming folds. I'm setting up a texture painting environment and selecting a dark gray color. I can set the color to black, but I want to leave some room to spare in case I need to make deeper creases somewhere. 
Imagine how the surface creases will go when the character bends this body part. Next, we'll add the raised parts of the folds by adding light color. Select Smear Tool and blur edges a little bit. Now I want to see how this texture will look as folds. To do this, you need to add the texture to the modifier. To see the effect of the texture on the surface, you can use Preview Debug Mode. Turn it on it with the Enable button and switch it to Constriction Folds. If you have it this mode, download latest version of Folds Modifier. Now you see a very strange effect. The model has shrunk all over the surface, even where we haven't drawn creases yet. It is because texture should be switched to non-color data mode, like you usually do with normal map. It is feasible only in shader editor at this moment. You can add texture node to any material and change mode here, then remove the nodes. I can't change color space because texture hasn't been saved. So save the image and change color space. Much better. Note that the colors have also changed. The gray on the background now matches 50% gray. So now I want to see how fold will be visible. Then the surface bends. So preview mode should be disabled. I will go out of local view and select the armature to set pose space. Ops, stretch texture hasn't been done yet. So disable its influence. Now you can see that it works. In Material Preview, you can see how Tension Map works. In Preview Debug section, click on Enable and select in Menu Tension Map. For example, I was expecting the area above the knee to constrict when in fact it stretches. Let's include the effect of the stretch texture to see where it works. You can see how the Tension Map is calculated while playing the animation. By the way, if you like how smoothly I switch between tabs, that's thanks to my synchronized workspaces add-in, which you can get for free at Blender Extensions platform. To enable the add-in, go to Settings and enable Allow Internet Access. Then find the add-in on the Get Extensions tab. Now let's get back to our model. It's time to add Stretch Map. I repeat the same process for the second texture, Set background color, switch color space to non-color data. I envision the knee bulging and creases radiating out from it. You can make the folds however you want, it's your decision. Now it is time to add texture to the modifier to see the result. By the way, if you see that your folds doesn't react to its influence, this means that you are not disabled the preview debug. I want to set up the influence, so this should be disabled. The knees bump from the surface too much. Let's fix that. A brush with a color of 50% gray does the job just fine. You can draw folds with modifier enabled to see the result real time. In this way, you need to draw all the folds. Let's see what textures I use for the model. This is Constriction Texture. And this is Stretch Texture. Using this textures, let's dive in into Modifier Settings. As you see, default setting looks bad, so let's fix that. First of all, 
Base edge distance. It depends on your model and face size. I set this value higher so that folds becomes visible. Effect scale basically scales the distance of bumping the surface. Next four is related to textures and influence. We already know them. Full vertex group allows the setup where modifier works using vertex group. For example, I don't need the creases on the suspenders. So I create a vertex group with all geometry excluding suspenders. In the modifier, you should press this button and select the desired vertex group. The smooth and smooth iterations apply smoothing to creases. This is similar to the smooth modifier, but it only affects the folds, not the original geometry. I'll decrease the default smoothing and increase the base edge distance. UV map should have the name of your UV map in case if you are using different name. Texture offset is the background color of your image that we have set for texture. Smooth factor is how edges of tension map blurs. If you want folds to appear earlier, set this value lower. Normal puff applies additional displacement of the mesh along folds normal. It makes folds looks heavier. Permanent minimum applies all folds to the mesh at minimum level. It makes the clothes look more shabby. Last but not least is blur tension map. It blurs the tension map that comes from tension map modifier. This is all for the tutorial. I hope it was useful.